Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome along to the Elastoplast Taping and Movement Series. This is week four of it. Um, we're up to session six. It's been great so far. It's been a real credit to Elastoplast and all the people there for, for putting together such a, a good series. Um, it's been great so far. I think it'll still be great for the weeks to come. Um, it's certainly been humbling to be put on, on a showcase with some great therapists and thinkers in this game. Um, so special thanks to uh, Todd Grundle for getting me along on this. Um, yeah, it's been great watching the guys so far. It's, uh, it's been really informative. Um, there's a lot of familiar faces and, and some new faces to me. Um, but it's always good to share ideas and sharing these ideas on, on taping, posture and movement. Um, I personally think that it's always very worthwhile to, to um, hear someone else's slant on things, no matter how simple or complicated. Um, we've all had different pathways and different experiences, so to share that's great. So um, definitely thanks for coming along tonight to hear my point of view on a few things. Um, my name's Tristan Chai. I'm a physiotherapist here in Adelaide. I, I run a clinic called Good Physio based in sunny Glenelg. Um, I'm also the head physiotherapist at the Adelaide 36ers um, basketball club in the National Basketball League. Um, aside from that, I've also done my master's in acupuncture. Um, so I'm an acupuncturist as well as a physiotherapist. Um, I guess my clinical interest lies um, naturally very basketball focused. Um, I enjoy working with basketball. I grew up playing basketball. Um, so the lower limb joint and muscle injuries that come with that um, and the rehab journeys and, and challenges um, really what, what floats my boat. Alongside that, we, we see everything in our clinic. We're a musculoskeletal clinic. Um, so we'll see everything uh, from runners to kickboxers to footy players and lacrosse players, soccer players. Um, and generally, Glenelg has a really fit and active population, so it's just generally people trying to keep fit. So we get a really good case mix, and that, that keeps my life pretty interesting. Um, aside from me today, we're also joined by Emma, who, pop your head in there, Em. Emma's, um, Emma's one of the physios here. Um, she has a, a specialist interest in gymnastics and um, she'll help if the questions get too hard but she'll also be my model for, for today. Um, a little bit of housekeeping to start with. We've got two Elastoplast representatives, uh, Lockie and Todd, controlling tonight's session behind the scenes. Um, if you have any questions you can direct message them in the chat forum and they'll um, they'll uh, filter them out and make sure they're not too hard and, and, and send them through to Em and we'll get to as many as we can throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the session. We'll probably leave it to the end of the session to get through a good, um, a good chunk of them. Um, so you can send that to them in the chat forum if you've got any questions along the way. Um, just a general disclaimer as well with, with all these things, um, all the advice that's given through this is, is quite general. Um, we haven't assessed your patients or the people that you might apply this to. So it, it is very general, um, hopefully very useful. Um, but in terms of the products as well, always read the label and follow the instructions for use. Um, if your particular symptoms persist, discuss that individually with your health professional. Um, and now we'll get, get into it. So, you can rest again if you want over there. <laughs> Chill out for a little bit. Um, so today we're talking about K-Tape. Um, we've already been lucky enough to have Josh Tidswell from Darwin. Um, and he's a friend of mine and a, a fellow UniSA graduate and Adelaide boy. Um, discuss some general considerations with taping, particularly rigid taping, but um, all is pertinent for, for what we're doing. Um, he, he went into deciding your purpose and um, 
your choice of tape based on that. Um, we also, on uh, Thursday, heard from uh, Dr. Paul Herman, who I was also lucky enough to meet when he was uh, here with some beach volleyball players down on our beach in Glenelg. Um, he discussed the use of K-tape in his latest talk when he was talking about posture and core. Um, so we've already had a little bit of a preview, which is great. Um, so tonight we're going to dive a little bit deeper uh, into some of the, the uses of K-tape and some of the principles behind its use. Um, K-tape's, it's an interesting one. K-tape was invented back in the 70s by a, a chiropractor, a Japanese chiropractor called Dr. Kenzo Case. Um, it evidently exploded on the scene in 1988 at, at the Seoul Olympics. Um, I don't personally remember that, I was about five, but um, I do remember it re-exploding on the scene in the 2000s when um, you see tennis players with the bright tape um, we saw a lot of college basketball players with bright tape and some of the Olympics through there as well. So it became super, super popular. Um, things that become super popular in this game also kind of get a little bit controversial when, when they see elite stars using it because some people want to um, claim it does everything and some people want to chop it down. So it's been really, really interesting. Uh, a really interesting journey for K-Tape. Um, the initial claims of K-Tape is that it would do everything from alleviate pain to reduce inflammation, relax muscles, um, enhance performance and support muscles, whatever that actually means, um, on the rehab journey. So it all sounds a little bit too good to be true. And the problem that it had is that it couldn't, prove that it was true. So it, it lacks a lot of um, scientific evidence, um, high level scientific evidence. Um, and it's not all its own fault. This is, this is the case with a lot of things in our industry, I feel, is that we can see what happens clinically and we can go one-to-one -one with a patient and go, hey, does that feel better? And it does, but does, it doesn't always translate to science. And my personal feelings with that is that doesn't mean we have to throw it out just because it's not evidence-based. It just means we have to be informed on that. Um, there's a problem with, if you want high level scientific evidence, not to bore you too much with this, but if you want high level scientific evidence, usually you need a, what's called randomized, a double blinded randomized control trial, which is hard with a lot of things manual. Um, definitely hard with tape because what, what double blinded means is the therapist has to be blind as well as the um, subject, the client. So they have to not be able to know whether they're taped or not. And so does the therapist. So it's practically impossible to do. So as a result, what we then default back to is our, our bigger mantra of um, do no harm. And certainly what it's shown is that there's no adversities to um, to K-tape. If anything, it helps. So let's crack on and, and try and use it to its best ability. The only really, the only way that it can really hurt someone is if they've got an allergy to tape or allergy to the adhesive. And having said that, and that's the same with every tape, um, K-tape tends to be a little more hypoallergenic than, than your regular rigid tapes anyway. So it's a really low risk way to try and enhance and move some things along. The other issue that I sometimes have clinically is people like to chop things down before they've tried them well, if they're not proven. And we, we work in a real evidence-based kind of industry, which is great. Um, but sometimes people don't get good at the things that aren't evidence-based and then complain that they're not working, but they're not that good at the, good at the process anyway. So um, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. So anyway, what is K-tape? So I'm assuming most people on here would know what K-tape is and they want to, want to learn a little bit more about it. But for your people that might not have, K-tape is a fabric style tape 
it's got a backing on it. It comes in a whole bunch of different colors. Um, we've got in the Elastoplast range, there's a ton of colors, green, blue, um, yellow, flesh and black. Um, I think one of the interesting, oh, the colors don't actually matter for starters. Um, it's just for pure swagger and flamboyance, what you would pick, whether you want to stand out or not. Um, I think also, well, it comes in big rolls or medium rolls, bigger rolls, and also pre-fabricated cut um, strips for your convenience. Um, I think the interesting thing with tapes is that I, th I think you truly get what you pay for with tapes. I think there's uh, possibly cheaper ones on the market in, and this goes across the whole range of tapes that just aren't really that good. They don't feel good and they're not comfortable. Um, I think Elastoplast leads the way in um, good quality tapes across their range. Um, so, and, and this is no exception to that. The most unique factor with the K-tape is that it stretches. So if we take off the backing, we have a decent amount of stretch. And that's not, that's pretty unique to K-tape. It doesn't happen with any other tape. You get a little bit of fix them all, but um, this is the key reason why I would use it for certain things. Now having, and it's also the key reason why I wouldn't use it for other certain things. So, so picking a tool for the right job is super, super important. Um, It also makes it a little bit of an art form of how we apply the tape. Um, I think taping indeed uh, therapy as a whole is a um, is an art form. It's a it's a team approach. It, it takes your own thinking meshed with the thinking of your client and and what's out there. So. With taping, I think there's an element of, of communication that's needed between the athlete and the therapist as to hey, this is what you need according to us. Also, we need to be able to listen as to what is comfortable for them um, and what they actually want. So um, it's, it's never nice having someone unhappily leave the table after you've taped them the way you wanted it and it's not the way they wanted it. Um, I think Eddie Farah in his talk um, the other week put it pretty really well in, in the use of taping to improve athlete confidence. Um, I think it's something that's hard to measure, but I think it's something that's, that's truly out there. If an athlete feels confident, even if it's tape that's not physically doing anything in particular, if mentally it's helping, I think it's a great thing. Um, sometimes I know sometimes at the 36s there'll, there'll be a player that gets a little niggle in warm-up and they need something just to help them get past that and it's probably not the time or the place to talk them out of it when you don't have the time and, and it's a little bit easier just to um, just to make them feel comfortable and indeed this is one of the uh, this is one of the ways that K-Tape work is by changing your comfort levels around a certain muscle or joint um, to change the way you function. Um, so, with that flexibility, you've got, with that art form of flexibility, you've got different levels that you can stretch it on. You've obviously got no stretch, 100% stretch, 75, 50. Um, so you, you can um, curate how much stretch you want to put on it. The other element that you've got to think about is when you're putting it on a joint is what position that joint is in. Um, generally, you, the idea of K-tape is to provide support while also providing as much movement as possible um, or as much movement as you want to. So 
You can certainly apply this the wrong way or you can certainly apply it to restrict movement. If you were to put a joint in its short range and put this on its end range, it would not allow for much movement. Um, that's not the role of this. This is the, the role of rigid tape is that. Um, and certainly you wouldn't use the K tape for that. It would be much more expensive. You're much better off using the rigid. Um, so it's great for supply, uh, supplying that um, support while also allowing that movement, tuning down the nervous system to alleviate some of that pain in the process. Um, so let's get into a few techniques. Um, so it's really important with any taping that you've assessed, uh, do you want to jump up on here, that you've um, made sure that your client is not allergic to tape. If they've never been taped before, you might get some clues as to their allergic reactions if they've had um, rashes break out from Band-Aids or they've had blood tests and that sticky stuff irritates them or whatever. So you might have that, in which case it's not necessarily a contraindication. You might want to test a little bit of um, tape on first before you go ahead and put it on. Um, also, we need to make sure the skin is clean and dry and, and not sweaty. The, one of the key principles of having K-tape on is that it's on the skin and it's on well. Um, we can't hide around that, particularly the way that it's, um, it's applied. So straight after a treatment or massage is not great. It has to be cleaned thoroughly. Straight after a, a workout might also be great. And on that, if it's, particularly, if it's a particularly hairy area, then that probably wouldn't be great for, for the skin contact as well. The reason we want good skin contact, apart from it serving its purpose, is that with some of these, um, some of these taping techniques, you can leave it on for literally three or four days, shower in it, and it, and it keeps working for you. Um, so we want it on there for the long haul. So preparation is key for that. Um, so we're going to work through a few methods. Um, I think it's probably important to point out at this time that the, um, uh, it's very individualized how we apply this sort of stuff. Um, I think uh, I probably do it, uh, I think I might do it different to the next person, but as long as we have in our mind what we're trying to achieve, um, we can get to the same end point. Um, I'm going to work my way up from the ankle um, to the calf, knee, lower back and then shoulder and we'll go through one, one uh, kind of technique on each joint um, and uh, we'll see how we go from there. The, um, the first joint we'll do is ankle. Now the ankle taping that I'm going to do, I'm just going to change our position around a little bit here. Now, the ankle taping I'm going to do is, is a little bit different because it's not about support. It's about, um, uh, it's about reducing swelling. So we're thinking Em's had a lateral sprain here on her right ankle and um, it's puffed up. So we see this a lot at the 36s. I find it really, really helpful um, to do for them after we've done all your initial stuff to send them away with something um, that's not just compression bandage, but also going to lift the skin and help with some of that edema drainage. Um, there's some great pictures on the net of what happens to a bruising pattern once it's had um, some K-tape on it. The way we do it in this particular case, um, I've pre-cut some, um, some some tape here. I'm just doing this in so you can see properly. I've measured it across from just above the malleolus to through to the other side. Okay. We're going to put a little bit of stretch on, but what I've done with this, I've got this off the bigger roll and cut four fingers onto it. Um, you can do four, you can do five. I don't think it really matters. I find four easier because it's just half and half. Um, 
and slice that up to leaving enough for an anchor here. One of the key things when applying this is we don't want to touch the adhesive. Okay, we're trying to avoid touching the adhesive with our hand. So what we try and do is rip at the junctions here. So this is all part of the purpose of not trying to, or we're trying to leave the adhesive in its best form on, a, on its best um, on its best canvas here, dry, dry, clean skin, and we place the anchor down. Now we can work on these feet here, or these fingers. And we work that down the line. Now it's actually easier to do this on a swollen cankle because you don't have so many corners to work around. But just applying a little bit of stretch, pressing it down, making sure the contact is good. And spreading these fingers down. I like this to go down to the toes because if anyone's had a swollen ankle before, you know that the, the, the swelling tracks down and if you can get this to reach down to the toes, it's more likely to clear quicker. Then getting your second piece and coming in from the, the medial side now. So I've done pink just to contrast it. Same method. We don't put too much pull on the initial anchor. Um, the reason being, we don't want that tension pulling on the anchor. It increases the chance that the anchor will give way and then the that taping will slide off. And we also don't want to put too much tension on the skin and cause a skin ir irritation because of the traction of the tape on the skin. So this is one of the more impressive looking kind of versions of K-Tape. And usually by the time you're doing this, you've done a little bit of craft to cut all this out. And then um, you get a gathering of um, coaches and support staff have a look and asking you 20 questions about it. But the idea of this is that it'll, it'll lift the skin and you'll get a little bit more lymphatic drainage through there. Um, great. Next, so we're gonna now flip you over them and look at the calf. Um, zoom this back. So, I mean, the indications for this, I think it's important to work out your purpose. Um, why are we taping and what are we expecting to get out of this tape? Excuse me, mucking around with the camera. So what are we trying to get out of this tape? Now, um, an Achilles sort of grumbly Achilles tendonitis or a low level kind of calf strain can sometimes benefit from, from K-tape. Um, I think our expectations have to be real for what K-tape can do. I don't think any kind of taping is a hey, I've strained my calf in half in the first half and I'm 
heading back to the rooms to get some tape on it so I can get back and, and play again. I, I think there's some realistic expectations. So I think in a clinical scenario, what we're going to have is a, a person that's been able to play a game and, and, and finish, but they're complaining of pain through one of these areas, um, either the Achilles or the calf, and we want to get them ready for training or the next game. So we're trying to give them some support in the meantime. I think that's the most viable time that you're going to use this. I think the other time that you use it is for player comfort when they're returning from a strain. Um, now, having said that, I don't think it's the be all and end all and I don't think you necessarily need it. But as I mentioned earlier, sometimes the athlete comfort and athlete um, uh, confidence is what you need to play to a little bit with that. I know, I mean, at the, for example, at, at the 36ers, we'll take them through their rehab and we're trying to get them back to 100%. I work very closely with our strength and conditioning coach to do so um, and our coaching staff to get them strong. It's not to get them to 90% and the K-tape does the rest kind of thing. It's, it's they're strong. So if they need a little bit of support here, which gives them the moral support to feel like they can do what they they need to do, then generally I'm happy with that um, because I'm happy with the calf that's underneath it already. So we can fight the bigger battle of not doing something unnecessary down the track. So Achilles and calf stuff, I kind of take the same way. It's a bit of a, uh, a one-stop shop. Um, I start with it, just turn the corner around the Achilles. Um, actually, just come down a little bit there. Go. Just, uh, just turn the corner around the cap near. About a 25% kind of stretch. So we're not going hammer and tongs on this, but just enough to get it up the cut. Make sure we rub that. You can rub it with the back of here, the back of the paper to activate the glue. And that'll give it some support. What I didn't point out, I don't think I pointed out yet, is that what we've done with the tape is we cut the corners off. So once we cut the area, we curve, we curve the corners so that um, that's to eliminate these edges through here. So if there's a sharp edge of a corner, it's more likely to sort of fray off and unravel what we're trying to do. So that's another way we're trying to get good contact and good consistent contact. Um, the, uh, it's a good job for your physio students if they're observing. I always find it amusing that how proud they can be that they can curve a corner and do some good scissor work when they're a 22 year old fourth year physio student. Placing this over the same spot. Okay. Now, just like what you would have seen on the ankle tape, we're doing one now, we've got this Y, y cut. This Y strip that we're gonna put out to the side there. Out to the side there. So you might not be able to see that in the new roll. So we've got the central line and then this Y tape around, that Y strip around. Okay. So like I said, I think this is you can use this for a return to sport and a return to training to grade that in. Um, 
I'd be hopeful that they can get confident enough to work without it. Um, but certainly it's reasonable to have it in that initial phase. Um, but this is the kind of thing I'd chuck on them. They've just played a game, they're sore. Send them home with some sort of support. We know with calf injuries that as soon as you've got a calf injury, you start comp uh, compensating with knee and hip stuff and even lower back stuff. So if you're hitching, um, you're going to create more issues up here while you're not training and then it's a harder rehab journey. So if we can cheat the system a little bit and support here, and this can literally stay on for four days, like I said, then we're at a head start and we're less likely to get that um, flow and effect up the chain. So that's perfect. So that's the calf. That's one calf technique. Let's roll you over onto your back. Do your left knee. Just wear it with time. So I'll motor along a little bit because I've yabbered away a bit too much. I've measured the knee up basically from the tuberosity to here. And the way we're going to do that is two strips. Now this, <coughs> this technique's more for um, uh, patella tendonitis or anterior knee pain of any sort. Um, so the money strip is this decompression strip that's going to go across the front. Okay, so flex the knee up about 75 degrees-ish. We're going to rip here. I'm going to get a really good kind of tension through there. Now if it's a patella tendonitis, we're going bang across the patella tendon. If it's more of an ostrich slatter type thing, we might go a little bit lower. Okay, we're, we're aiming for the tight spot. Okay. So tension in the middle, not so much tension on the edges. Then from there, we're going up the up the quad. I'm going to start at the top of the quad bulk. Curl our way around. Add a little bit of tension as we come around. Flattening it out and hooking over the tibial tuberosity so you're on the other side of that bone with no tension on it again. Mirror image on this side. Bit of tension coming around. And drop the tension off. If you want to drop your knee out so they can see. Mm -hmm. You get a bit of crinkle there, and then if you want to bend that and just create yeah, it that way. Cool. So we got a little bit of an eye shot, uh, an eye, a face on, not the letter eye. Um, so that's that one. Um, we might, yeah, let's do it quickly lower back. So if you want to pop your jumper off, if that's okay. <laughs> Lower back, I uh, don't stand for it. Yeah, yeah, you're up. Just go. Um, this is more of a clinical lower back type thing. So you get someone in with an acute low back pain into the clinic a fair bit. Um, I find this a really simple one, so I won't dwell too much on it. But if you want to lean forward over the bed, just where you're comfortable. It can be as simple, this is where the art form of it, I think, comes in. You can apply the tape up and down here with as little or as much tension as you feel necessary according to how much um, restriction you want to put on. So basically what it ends up looking like That with just minimal amount of tension, what that'll prevent is a little bit of flexion. Um, so if that's their irritating position, then that's certainly just going to 
help them get over that. When you've got acute low back pain, you're sometimes as a clinician, you're a little bit stuck for ideas because one part of it, it just needs to settle down and we want to encourage movement at the same time. So that's as simple as I go in the clinic. Um, interesting point though, is that that can look the way it looks and be applied in multiple different ways with multiple different effects. So it's not so much how it looks, it can look the same and be applied a whole bunch of times. So sometimes what I've come across is people apply it at home and they've gone, okay, it looks exactly like that in the right spots, but with the wrong tension. And it, it completely changes everything. So there's that. One last one, shoulder. Let's get you um, sitting here facing there. Um, so this one would be just a general shoulder, um, kind of stability, but I don't like saying that word for tape because it's sort of feedback. But if you've got a bit of um, a rotator cuff tendinopathy, some bursitis or just general shoulder pain, I think this one helps. Um, we use three, three lengths. I've got a Y, y cut, an I cut, just general one, and then a shorter one as well, okay? So we're gonna start with the Y cut. Get the head out below there. I've measured it from below, just below the deltoid. Okay. And we're gonna apply these two arms. So if you put your hand behind your backwards. And then that's gonna come around the front. Always got a rubber, always got a rubber. Then you're gonna put your arm across to the other side. Like you're reaching across the horizontal. Yeah. This one just flows up the back. Okay. Beautiful. I'm going to use our bigger piece. When we put on the anchor, it's preferable to get a bit of skin contact with it and not just put it on the tape itself. That will just hold better. Can you raise your arm up to the side and it's like a duct? Abducted her arm. Let's place that one on. Rest that down. And one over the top to anchor it all down. Let me go soft on just so that you can see the end result of that. Okay, so like I said, these are all just general. So it was the pink, blue, and then green. Um, so these are all just the general kind of uh, taping options, and there's lots of ways. There's actually a, a ton of resources. I'll come back to here. There's a ton of resources um, uh, online. Lots of different different methods of doing things. And, and ways to be a lot more specific. Um, so that completes what we've sort of gone through. So I've recap, just to recap, we've gone through the, the key principles of, of K-tape, specifically rounding the edges, don't, touching the uh, don't touch the adhesive, um, consider how much tension you're putting on, um, that overlie all the other taping, taping principles um, picking the right tape, checking for allergies and whatnot. Um, went through those examples. Um, let's get some questions going, Em. What have we got? A couple. Um, okay. How much time have we got? We've got about three minutes, I believe. So let's get through a couple of them. Um, so first question. 
was uh, with patella tendonitis in your experience, have you found K-tape more effective or rigid tape techniques? Um, effectiveness is an interesting thing because it, it really comes down to who's experiencing it. Um, usually, I've found it more compliant. I find my players and athletes have enjoyed K-tape better because it gives them a little bit more freedom to move while still, still giving the same support. You'll have a few cases where you've got a really grumbly patella tendonitis. Someone's still trying to get through the season and they want the feel of rigid. I think it's nice to be able to be armed with both, um, um, both possibilities. But um, I, I certainly have lately lent more towards K-tape for that um, to get through trainings and get through stuff comfortably. Um, rather than uh, uh, rather than rigid. Um, I think the other thing with rigid is sometimes when it's on, a, it, it, the sweat can can knock a little bit loose. Um, so yeah, I've definitely learnt towards that. Um, are there K-tape techniques for hip flexors? Yep, there is. Um, all that should be available online, um, but there's certainly ways that you can take from the back to the front and facilitate that hip flexor um, activity for sure. Um, final, well, final question before I think we'll run out of time. Um, do you use K-Tape more prior to athletic performance or post performance for recovery? Um, I th think, to be honest, it's a 50-50. Um, I think uh, I like using it for recovery. I think I'm, in terms of using it for athletic performance, I use it, but I think my preference would be that they don't need to use it. Um, so uh, I'd like my athletes to feel like they don't need K-Tape to perform and they have strength and they feel robust within their uh, um, within themselves that they should have the confidence that they don't need it. Um, having said that, I still use it a fair bit on, on people that feel like they need it. Um, I really love the way that they can recover with it, whether it's swelling or whether it's just to facilitate so um, they're not limping out of the change rooms back to their car. Um, and I think we see that a lot. And we see it a ton in um, we see it a ton in basketball. Um, part of it's the swagger of getting back to your car. You've got to have a bit of a gangster limp, but it would be nice if they didn't, um, and it'd be nice if they're not in pain after um, jumping and landing on the hardwood. Um, we've got one final question. Um, having recently sustained a grade three ATFL tear and a grade two CFL tear to the ankle. Would you recommend K tape or rigid tape in the rehabilitation phase? Great question. Um, depends a bit on how recent, I think. Um, certainly, well, there's a lot of how recent, what's the risk and what's the reward? Um, I think in terms of rehab, you've got, if you've done a grade three ATFL and a grade two CFL, there's a lot of check boxes to tick. Um, and not all of them are that dangerous in terms of re-straining it. So rigid tape might not be necessary. Um, and I'll probably opt towards K-tape if you just need it for comfort, if you need anything. Um, I think it's nice to do some really controlled rehab without anything so you know what your ankle is doing. Then as you go on to the next phase, if you need some tape and some support, that's when you do it. But I think being guided by um, your clinician and using their clinical reasoning, I think that would be able to highlight the, um, the wrinkles in your rehab where you're gonna need something extra. Now, usually for me, those wrinkles are with when you go back into competitive, whether that's uh, um, Entering back into competitive is when there's a little bit of chaos back into it and you can't control that. When you're doing straight line running, you can control everything. When you're doing agility, you can still control that too. But when you add other bodies in and reaction, that's when you get chaos. Now, there's also elements of chaos. So in basketball, one-on-one -on -one 
is a little bit of chaos because you don't know what the other person is doing. Two on two is more chaos because you've got three people going, um, three people that you're, you're trying to dodge um, and so on and so forth. So somewhere along that line, you're probably going to need some sort of protection. Um, so in answer to your question, I will try not to use anything until it gets competitive um, unless you need K-tape just to be comfortable and then rigid tape to come on as, as a protection as we get into the chaotic battle of competition. Um, I think that's all we've got time for in terms of questions. Thanks for, thanks for coming along and thanks for having me. Um, the, the next session is Thursday, so two nights time, same time. Um, and it's gonna be Simon Rice from the ACT Brumbies, um, which should be great. He's gonna be discussing shoulder taping prehab and rehab techniques so get along i'll be there too i'll be watching and then um you'll see a little bit more of me come june and i'll be talking about um ankle and knee rehab so thanks again for having me and uh we'll see you again next time